today we're going to look at how to um, create depth of field without using depth of field generated directly in view. You can see on the screen uh, a render of a scene I have just uh, built for the purposes of this exercise. Um, and at the moment you can see in the render display that we are looking at the diffuse image, the, the rendered image. There are two buttons uh, alongside this particular option, which is um, obviously this option is display last render. We have the alpha and we have, have the depth. So if I go ahead and save out this image, and we'll just replace one I've already saved. Yep, replace that. I'm also going to save out the alpha, just as a side um, exercise whilst we're looking at this uh, these functions. And we'll save the courtyard alpha there. Save. Yes, we'll replace it. And we'll also save the Z depth. We'll talk about this in a second when we get into Photoshop. So we'll save that. And we'll save the Z. Yes. <clears throat> so those are saved out. So let's look at Photoshop. And we'll import those three images. So we have the alpha, the Z, and the courtyard open. So there's our diffuse or rendered image. And our Z depth. So we'll talk about the Z depth uh, for a second. We're <clears throat> looking at the same scenarios we, we see in view and other pieces of software where the image is reduced to a kind of a flat grayscale image. What we're particularly interested in is the way uh, the, the, the different shades of gray are interpreted. So black or darker objects are close to the camera. White is a long way away. What we really want to do is we want to get that information into this uh, picture so we can use it. So we're just going to select all, which is Control A, Control C to copy it, activate the image we want it to go into, but we don't want to paste it straight in. What we need to do is we need to look at the channels tab down here and we need to add a new layer and we're just going to paste that image straight in. So two things have happened. We've created alpha one, which is our uh, Z depth. And Photoshop has put a marquee around the, the, uh, the image. We'll look at why in a second, but remember to activate RGB before we go any further and go back to layers. At this stage, I like to refer to or think of this marquee as a reminder to you that you really don't want to be working on the original image. If you work on the original and then you inadvertently save it, then that image is lost and we have to go back to view to get it back. So I like to copy and paste that layer, Control C, Control V, and you'll see down here we've got a new layer and this is the layer we're going to edit. That means that when I try to save this now, Photoshop will remind me that this is being saved as a PSD, a Photoshop document which has layers. So for our exercise, we're going to filter this image and we're going to use a blur and we're going to use lens blur. OK, so it's the lens blur we need. And if I bring in the lens blur dialog because it was on my other screen. What's going to happen here is and it's already started happening because you can see we've got some blur in the foreground. This uh, swift is blurred, but that back wall is nice and crisp. We can change this simply by looking at the radius, okay, and the focal distance. Focal distance we choose quite easily just by clicking on the object that we want to be in full focus. So you can now see the depth of field has changed. So we're nice and crisp on this particular layer of gray. So we're looking at across the mid ground of, of our image. You can see the mosque in the background and the, the date palms are blurred. Not so much in the foreground because we don't have that kind of contrast in our particular depth of field, but we'll look at that in a second. So we can go through the whole image clicking on different portions. So I've clicked on the mosque tower. You can see the mosque is now 
nice and crisp but we've got a little bit of blurring on the date palms and everything in front is very blurred so it's about you as an artist what is your focal point within the scene so we can click on the on the fountain and the fountain will be crisp and clear which also happens to be more or less on the same line as the bird so we get this mid portion nice and blurred that can be increased or decreased to suit yourself this is not true depth of field this is going to need some work afterwards because you can see we're not getting the blur on these palms that we really want to get so we uh, click on the points our focal point so i'm going with the bird we've got some depth of field and we're going to click OK. So that's the depth of field. I'm just going to undo that because really what we want to be looking at is the other image as well, which is our alpha map. So you can see basically all the detail is white and the sky is black. This enables us to be able to use the magic wand tool. Remember to look at this glorious button up here. I love this button, contiguous. All that means is if you tick that, it'll only click the portions of black which are joined continuously. You can see areas here have not been selected. If we get rid of that button and reselect, we've now got the marquee in all the black areas. This will take some uh, tinkering around with, uh, particularly in terms of the tolerance because we want this to be a nice crisp edge. But for my purposes, I'm not bothered about that. I'm just going to deselect and copy and paste that into our courtyard image. Select the black again. And I'm going to activate the layer below before I press delete. So if I now poke the eyes out, you can see we've deleted the sky. That means you can put your own custom sky in there if you don't like the sky you've already got okay so that's the purpose of the alpha map in this particular image it's always worth saving them because uh, you may want to come back and work on this on again and change things so keeping those files is a good thing so i'm just going to go back to where we were back 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 to paste so remember, we're looking at this particular instance, we're looking at creating a channel, we're looking at putting that alpha map detail in there. The layer itself, we're going to filter and we are going to blur it and we're going to use a lens blur. And this enables depth of field. And very quickly, in terms of post work, if I just increase the radius so that the background is a bit rubbish deliberately, I'm bumping it right up because what I would normally do in this particular case is once I click OK. OK, so you can see we've still got some crisp edges. That's not the way depth of field is supposed to work. So I would generally just get the blur tool. Just check that we've got the strength on. All of the settings are, are the way we want them. And just very quickly just blur that out a little bit so that it becomes a little bit more believable same here the tower itself looks a little bit odd thinking about it so i might do that and i might do a little bit of work on the birds in the sky so that's how to use the z depth to create a fake depth of feel effect in photoshop um, i hope you found this useful remember to check us out on social media and youtube for regular updates on new tips and tricks videos thank you very much bye bye